A while back, I uploaded a video detailing the performance differences between a Core i5 and a Core i7. Now, they were from the Haswell lineup, not the Skylake lineup, but that's besides the point. If you're interested in that video, you can check it out in the card above me. In the case of Skylake, their fundamental differences haven't changed. The Core i5-6600K still packs four cores and four threads, which means that we don't have hyper-threading on this processor, and it overclocks about the same as the 6700K, its four-core eight-thread counterpart. What I did in this video was overclock both the i7 and the i5 to 4.6 GHz, throw them into the rig behind me featuring 16GB of 3000MHz DDR4 and an AMD R9 390, and then run a series of rendering tests via Adobe Premiere Pro. I ran four tests with both processors for a total of eight, and I changed one variable during each run. Using my Moto X Pure, which I can make a review about if you're more interested in it, it's only 300 bucks, and uh, you get a 1440p screen, Snapdragon 808 hexa-core processor. It's a nice phone, if you wanna see a review, let me know. Uh, but I used this phone to film both a 1080p one minute clip and a 4K one minute clip, both at 30 FPS. Using Premiere Pro, I made sure that both clips were trimmed to exactly one minute, and then I took the 1080p clip and simply exported it using the YouTube 1080p preset, which you can find under the H.264 format. I then took this same 1080p clip and then upsampled it to the YouTube 4K preset. Then moving on to the 4K clip, I rendered it as was using the YouTube 4K preset and then ran the test one more time downsampling that clip to 1080p. Keep in mind I did this with both the i7 and the i5 so we'll have a total of 8 tests. The only two other boxes that I selected under the export window were the use maximum render quality box and the render at maximum depth box which I use all the time. I use them for all of my videos that I upload. So with that, let's see how well the i5 compares to the i7. The results were as expected. The i7 is the content creator king from Intel, and I do recommend this processor for anyone who does any sort of content creation, whether it be video, audio, photo, you get the point. The percent rendering time decrease between all four graphs was almost exactly 47%, meaning that if you were to upgrade from this i5 to this i7 and keep everything else in your rig exactly the same, you should expect to see somewhere around a 50% rendering time cut as a result. Using the Xeon E3 1230v5 and overclocking that to 4.6 GHz would give you almost identical results to this i7, by the way. If you're interested in how to overclock that Xeon in particular, you can check out the card above me. So I know that nothing was essentially discovered in this video. I mean, you should expect an i7 with hyper-threading to perform much better than its non-hyper-threaded counterpart. But I feel like reiterating this point because a lot of you are asking me the differences between the i5 and the i7 when it comes to content creation. Because as you saw in the card that I flashed earlier, the differences between the i5 and the i7 when it came to gaming performance, the, the change between the two wasn't all that great when it came to frame rates that you saw in most games. However, if you do a lot of content creation, even if you play games on the side, but you still upload videos to YouTube or Twitch or anything like that, I definitely recommend the i7 simply because you're gonna be able to edit and render all of your clips much easier. You're not gonna have that rough scrubbing if you you know are sliding between clips. Uh, the i5 experienced a bit of that, but the i7, it was super fluid with 1080p. 4K is a lot harder for any processor to handle, and in that case, maybe a Xeon or something like a 5820K, uh, you would benefit from those added threads. But for just general content creation in 1080p, maybe even 1440p if you're into that, the i7-6700K is my recommendation. 
If you're wondering where the gaming benchmarks are for this newly built rig, don't worry, those are on the way. I might even include the i5 in those tests just to show that there isn't going to be much of a difference in most games, DirectX 12 being an exception. Sometimes it depends on the game and optimization, it, it gets pretty complicated. But the cool thing is that I have an R9 390 in this rig and I haven't made a video covering this graphics card yet, so it'll be interesting to see how well this card fares with an i7, uh, considering that no CPU bottleneck should exist at all. AMD is also sending their RX 480, so we'll do a head-to-head -head between that card and this one, and I'm going to see if they'll send me a second one so that we can crossfire them and compare that crossfired combo with a single GTX 1080, which would actually cost more ultimately. Uh, I think that the, the crossfired combo has has a chance, folks. Stay tuned for that. This is, uh, oh wait, no, I, I just skipped the whole part. Yeah, give the video a thumbs up. If you liked it, give it a thumbs down. If you felt the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, stay tuned for a PC build and also all of this other stuff. I'm not gonna run through all that again because you guys don't have short-term memory loss, I hope. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.